We're not renewing your contract. Today is your last day. How do you move forward after hearing those words when you're expecting to walk into an office and find out that you're going to be signing a new contract that day? It bowled me over, hit me hard. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I somehow struggled to find my voice that day about a year ago, and I simply said to the manager I'd only known for about three months, why? And he looked at me, and he repeated himself. He said, we're not renewing your contract. Today is your last day. And as he said that, he stood up, and he walked out of the room. That was all I had. I never expected a 17-year career in TV news to end that way. And I didn't know what to do. I was scared, of course. I'd never been on unemployment before. That was something completely foreign to me. I had two little boys at home. We had just lost half of our family income. And at the same time, I didn't know if I could be the mom they needed full day as a stay-at-home mom, even though I had a lot of friends who are stay-at-home moms. And on top of that, there was a moment, too, where I was thinking, I didn't visualize this happening and didn't know exactly what to do. It was completely devastating um, for someone who has been in news for so long. And I was in fourth grade when I actually started on the journey. I looked at, you know, Connie Chung, Barbara Walters, names that be familiar to some of you. And I wanted to do what they did, and some local folks, too. Um, so with that, I went home that afternoon. And what do you do after getting devastating news and not knowing where it came from and, and why? You get in your PJs. <laughs> And I got in my most comfortable pair of PJs, and I remember just laying down in bed and looking up at the ceiling, you know, that lovely popcorn stamp ceiling we have here in central Ohio, and thinking to myself, what am I going to do? I was really, really scared. Um, and, you know, that's a big change, right? That's a big unexpected thing, and it's hard to drive forward from that. But there are other things in life that you all can kind of feel me on as well. I remember a time trying to drive forward when I was about 17 years old. I was going to my Saturday job at a hardware store that my dad owns. And there was an ice storm. I lived in central Illinois, similar climate to central Ohio. And I was trying to go up and down a hill in my neighborhood. And at that time, my car skidded and hit the curb. And it bent my wheel well. And I couldn't drive the car forward. It wasn't moving. So I was crying, and I went to go find my dad, who was just, you know, a few houses away. When I was about 19 or 20, a good friend of mine, his parents had a place in the Rockies. And we were there one summer, and he said, you need to learn how to drive a stick shift. Sounds like a good idea in the middle of the Rockies, right? Like, actually on the mountain. And so I said, okay, and I went with it. And I was looking at both sides of the mountain. We were on a very kind of narrow road, of course, going up the mountain. And with that how deep it was on both sides. And I got scared and nervous, and I said, no, I'm not going to do it. So we get scared, we get nervous. It's hard to drive forward in the midst of things we're unsure about, big changes, turmoil in our life. But in this situation, with my career changing, coming to an end as I saw it at the time, I gave myself the weekend, and then I said, you know what? I'm going to figure this out. So we all have life-altering moments, right? People who hurt us deeply. Explosive situations that are unexpected, we don't know, are going to happen in our lives. We may be in mourning over something or someone or become depressed. It is inevitable. Change will happen, and it will be hard, and it will rock us to our core. But what I'm here to share with you tonight is no matter what it is that rocks you to your core, you can be the architect of change. Intentionally find your story in the midst of change by research, analysis, and passion, which are X, Y, and Z up there tonight. You can get through adversity. You can find your new norm. You just have to be very intentional about it. As a journalist, research, of course, incredibly meaningful to me. And so using a very quantitative and qualitative way of looking at things, we start to find our stories. So I know a speaker up here earlier tonight said, don't get your smartphone out, but if you could humor me, pull your smartphones out. I'd like you to. And go to your notes section if you have your phone on you tonight, because I want you to write down a couple of different things that you can take home with you that are about you. 
So X is research, and research in this case starts with what five things would make my day great? So the Monday that I decided to drive forward, even though I didn't know how I was going to do it, I met with a business coach and friend of mine in Columbus, and that was the question he asked me. So I want you to write down, if you have your notes out, what five things would make your day great? For me, it was community. It was connecting people. It was being able to write. It was being able to empower women, and it was social engagement, social media engagement. That is some of the things that make my day great in terms of professionally. So with that, you can take that information and ultimately you can really analyze it. So why is your analysis? Why would those five things make your day great? And I want you to think back to the time when you were a child and you were just so excited to have your friend come from down the street to say, hey, do you want to come over to play? Or maybe you wanted to go ride the roller coaster at Kings Island and you were just so excited for that to happen, ready to move forward, ready to take your step into the day. That's how you should feel about those five things and why you're explaining that they make your day great. Now, when you're in the middle of really hard times and difficulties, it's, it's hard to sometimes pinpoint this, but as they say, Rome was not built in a day, and your life also is not going to be restructured in a day. It takes time. One of the things that I had to do every week as I was kind of analyzing my five things and what I was going to do with them to create this new career was really look at my week in review. What were the things that I had accomplished that week? And then what were the things that I didn't do so well at? And how was I gonna try to make a change on that next week and have that on paper in front of me? Where was I excelling? Where could I improve? Did I turn in the wrong form to the Department of Job and Family Services? Because <laughs> that happened so many times because I didn't know the process. Or maybe the video bid that I put in in my new kind of project area wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be and I could make it better the next time. You know, it's really easy to analyze something when we have a boss, right? I'm sure you all have plenty of bosses who analyze things for you. But it's harder when it's yourself and you're in the middle of difficulty. So when you're doing it at a crossroads, it's difficult. It's, when you're doing it on your own period, it's difficult. But I knew I had to look at that each and every week. Z is your passion. And in this day and age of social media, we share a lot, don't we? <laughs> a lot. And people are nosy, they're curious, they want to know what's going on. You're passionate about what you're doing or what you're changing in your life. I, you should be able to share some of it on social, but don't put too much of it out there. Just enough to let people know you're heading in the right direction. A woman that I know who lost her job recently talked about how she was uh, taking care of animals with an animal shelter locally, and that's what she was doing, positive things, and that is what I remember from her, and that is what I tried to do when I went through that time. The other part of my passion was I had to drive myself forward to meet with one person every single day for two months during the week because I knew if I was talking to people, I would find what I was supposed to be doing next. And you should see my calendar. It is Full of appointments and people who were kind enough that I'd made from other contacts and other parts of my life here in central Ohio to talk with me. And at the end of it, my very last meeting in two months, a woman that I'd known for several years said, well, Michaela, I know what you want to do. Community is important to you. Writing is important to you. Have you ever heard of brand journalism? Never had heard of the concept. And apparently, it's something that started to kind of grow in interest over the course of the last three years. It's basically helping companies, individuals, organizations tell their story through videos that they can share on social media. And I thanked Heather for that. It's been a huge changer in my life, a huge game changer. So this is your guide inside. What you can see is the tunnel. Because when you're going through difficulties, you're in a very dark tunnel. And you have to find a way to get out and get through it so you don't get stuck inside. You have to take charge with X, Y, and Z, create a new pattern and a new norm. So when I was about, I don't know, 10 years old, um, my father actually was a small business owner all my life, and he had a home office down in the basement. And I remember um, going downstairs, and Danny, if you know Zig Ziglar, yeah, right? So um, Zig was playing on a cassette tape, of course, because that was the time when I was growing up. And I remember sitting on the floor, and you know, Zig's a motivational speaker, someone who has trained sales teams across the country and across the world. He's since passed. But at the time, I remember listening to those tapes and thinking to myself, wow, this guy, like, he really is inspiring people. And my dad must think he's cool, so I think he's cool. Well, little did I know that so many years later that this would hit right on this quote that I have right here from Zig, that you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win 
prepare to win, and expect to win. So with those five things that we've talked about that you'll be able to take home hopefully tonight in your notes section and really think about and analyze and assess and find your passion, I want you to think about those things to create a list of what you need to do to make that next thing in your life happen if you've been going through difficulty or when you do. And from that list, create a 90-day plan. And that's what I did through the divine, ancient, divine intervention, I should say, of Mary Kay Cosmetics. <laughs> and I say that because I actually don't use Mary Kay, and a friend of mine brought a CD to me from a national director, and it was all about structuring your life. And lo and behold, this national director had a 90-day planner that I never would have found in my entire life if my friend hadn't brought me that CD. And I love a good planner. I never would have found this. So with that, I had a wish list, a mission statement, personal, professional, and I was actually really plotting out what I wanted my life to look like. It had my week in review as well in there, and it meant so much to me in those first three months when I was trying to figure out where I was going. In that planner, there are notes from those meetings with people that I was telling you about where I started to connect the dots. Okay, this person might not meet someone in this area. They're a startup. They don't have a lot of money right now, but maybe they know somebody else who needs someone to help with social media or writing. And from that, I got ideas, obviously, and I wrote those down, too. You could kind of say it was a planner and a journal. And with that, I prioritized. If you've ever heard of a brain dump, it is something that is 10 to 15 minutes long. And what you do is you sit down with a piece of paper in front of you, and in those 10 to 15 minutes, you write down everything that's on your mind. So think of it anything from anything that's bothering you, you need to get the sink fixed, to you need to get the kid to the doctor for this, to those things that are really important to your life and in that change and in that time. For me, it was professionally. Even if you're not a planner, and I've bought my husband probably about 15 planners over the course of our marriage, and he never uses them, I think this is really critical at this point in time. It also helps you deal with, you know, public and family scrutiny, right? Because you're going to get questions in the midst of this. I specifically remember Thanksgiving when my sister asked me, so what is it again you're doing, and how are you going to make money? That was the conversation. It's sometimes very hard to drive forward. You can barely walk forward when you're in the midst of that tunnel. But when you've been through the tunnel, I can say this, because I stand up here and tell you the story today, and this is actually the first time I, I've explained publicly exactly what happened, even though I still don't know what happened, what happened to me in that moment when everything changed. When we walk through the tunnel, we're vulnerable, we're able to talk about it. There's an honesty with it that is like no other, and we really have faith in our purpose. So what comes out of X, Y, and Z of research, analysis, and passion? I have a growing business. I just got an office downtown, and I'm so excited about that. I have a new podcast that is providing content and empowering women, moms, which is exactly something I wanted to do. It was part of my five. I have a new group of colleagues that I'm able to kind of network and talk with on a regular basis, and I definitely have a stronger faith. I had, faith, I had a strong faith before, but this really has gotten me through a lot. And, you know, I found out that I wasn't just passionate about news. That wasn't the core of my passion. It was kind of an extension of my passion. Instead, I was passionate about community. That's what mattered to me. And, you know, every week, and sometimes a couple times a week, I still run into people at Sam's, the grocery store, and they say to me, I miss you, and where did you go? It's not the same. And that hurt a lot because I didn't have an answer for the first six months of my journey as I was trying to work through all of this. But now I know there's purpose behind it, and it's kind of amazing when I have those conversations now because I now know I was making a difference doing what I did here when we moved to Central Ohio, and I carry community with me now, and that's so important to me. So two weeks ago, I was sitting in the parking lot of my former workplace because my husband was still working there at the time. He's since left for a new job, actually, within the last week. And I was taking notes, strangely enough, for this TED Talk. Again, eyes wide open, looking for opportunities to move forward, drive forward. And a song came on the radio, and I turned it up. And the song simply said, and some of you may be familiar with it, you think you'll never get back to the you you used to be. Take step one, leave the darkness, feel the sun, tell your heart to beat again. And at that moment, I realized after a year, it had happened. Thank you. <laughs>